Hi, I'm Patrick. I'm here at Open Source Summit in beautiful Austin, Texas. And uh, I was invited to speak about uh, our open source project, Elira, which provides tooling for data scientists and developers. Basically provides a set of productivity features that make their life a lot easier with respect to the day-to-day -day tasks that they have to complete. What I would like to do is uh, show you a little demo that um, basically gives you a summary of some of the key features that we have implemented. All right, so what I'm showing you here is JupyterLab, which is a very popular development environment for data scientists and developers alike. And uh, what you're seeing here is an installation of JupyterLab that I'm running locally on my laptop. And we can see that I have installed the Elira extensions, which provide uh, some of the productivity features that I've mentioned. So the main feature that our users uh, like are the pipeline editors, which solve several problems. And uh, let me just show you some of them. Let's assume I have my Jupyter Notebook open here, which of course you're very familiar with. Um, traditionally, you can run individual cells in this notebook. You can run all the cells. But what you can't really do easily is run this notebook in an environment that is not your local environment. So you can't really run it on your, uh, for example, on a server that has more hardware and software resources than, for example, your local system might have. So what we have done in Elira is we provided you with this inf with the ability to run this pipe or run this notebook um, as a pipeline in a remote environment that might have access to additional resources. So, for example. It might have access to um, hardware accelerators. It might have access to a lot more disk storage. It might have better I.O. performance than your local system has. And so with this ability, you simply click this button. You select um, the runtime environment where you want to run this, this notebook in. And then once you submit this notebook, it will execute in that environment without taking any resources in your local environment. So in many cases, uh, you would probably want to work with more than just one notebook, right? Because imagine you're working on a machine learning workflow that uh, downloads some data, it cleans the data, um, and then runs some analysis over. Uh, you would want to run these notebooks or scripts, uh, for example, in sequence. And this is where you can use our pipeline editors that allows you to visually create those pipelines. Uh, let me just uh, drag and drop a couple of these notebooks onto my canvas here. So in this case, um, I have a notebook that loads the data, and then I have a notebook that cleans the data. Um, by connecting those two notebooks, I can define dependencies between those two nodes. So in this case, the second notebook will execute after the first notebook has been, has been executed. If I want to run multiple notebooks in parallel, I can do this as well. Let me drag on two more notebooks onto my canvas here, connect them, and now I have built my pipeline, right? So all that's left to, to do for me is now configure each one of the nodes. I'm going to do this by just selecting um, the container image where I want to run those notebooks in. If I now um, save my pipeline. You can see that um, the error had disappeared. Let me also configure the other nodes in my pipeline. It's just going to take a second here. And what you can also see is there are various options that I can define. So for example, if my notebook has any file dependencies uh, that must be present for it to run, or if I have certain environment variables that um, I can use to configure the behavior of my notebook or even Kubernetes secrets, right? Or data volumes that um, you want to mount in your notebooks. You can pre-configure all of this, save your pipeline, and then you can simply hit the click, uh, you can simply click the run button, give the pipeline a name. Just going to name this pipeline demo here. Uh, select the runtime configuration. And currently we are supporting two types of runtime environments. We are supporting Kubeflow pipelines, which is what I'm showing you here. But we are also supporting uh, Apache Airflow as a runtime environment. Once I submit this job here, what's happening is we are preparing this pipeline for execution. And then we are sending the relevant information. Let me open up uh, the pipeline here. We can see that each one of the notebooks uh, has been processed successfully. 
um, we can access uh, the status information for each one of those notebooks. And once um, I have verified that everything was running as, ex as expected, I can then use um, the link that has opened up in our JupyterLab environment to access the results of this test run. If I open up my cloud storage here, I can see um, the notebooks that have been executed. If I, for example, download the data cleaning notebook and open it up, we can see that all of the input cells have now been processed. I can see the output of those nodes, of those cells, and um, basically have access to all of the information that I need at, the, at my fingertips without actually ever running anything in my local environment, right? So uh, as you can imagine, this makes it ex extremely easy, right? To fire off a bunch of jobs, one after another, um, that will expedite some of the, the tasks that I need to perform on a daily basis, right? Because as you can imagine, my data keeps changing over time, right? So I might have to rerun these jobs over and over again. Uh, you can either do this uh, interactively, like I was showing you here in our user interface, but you can also use the CLI, which um, you can then use to, for example, automate certain steps of the process. Uh, if you want to incorporate the pipeline execution, for example, in your existing CICI, CICD processes, you can do this. Uh, you can schedule it uh, daily, for example, on a daily basis, a monthly basis, whatever suits your needs. All right, so what I was just showing you here is how you would go about creating a pipeline from uh, Jupyter Notebook or a set of Jupyter Notebooks or Python scripts. But uh, something we are also supporting for um, the Apache Airflow and the Kubeflow runtime environment is what we call custom components. Unlike um, notebooks, custom components are considered to be black boxes, right? And the idea is that you might have experts in your team who create um, certain machine learning tasks, right? Uh, so those tasks, for example, might be loading some data, might be cleansing the data, um, might be uh, choosing features, right, from, from your data set, might go through uh, the training. And with custom components, these experts can implement the source code and make it available to all the users, right? So as a user, I don't have to know how these things are implemented. I can simply use them. Uh, I'd like to use this uh, analogy that pretty much anybody can use a cell phone, right? You don't have to know how to make a call, right? What happens under the covers. You don't have to understand how Wi-Fi works to access the internet. And we are trying to do the same here with our editor and these custom components. So if I um, open up pipeline that is specific to Kubeflow pipelines, we can see that in addition to those generic components that we have, right, that enable you to run a notebook or a Python script, uh, I have now uh, additional selection options that I can choose from. So for example, I can drag a component called download file on my canvas. And this component, uh, just like the name implies, downloads a file from a public web source. All I have to do is, in essence, select this node and then configure the name of the file that I want to, uh, that I want to run. Uh, let me just copy the name of this file here. Saved it earlier. This way you won't have to see me type things in. Uh, and then I can basically, um, for example, drag another component onto my canvas here, and then I connect the two, and then I need to define, okay, what is the second component going to do with the output of this first component? So I'm going to select, okay, I want to use this downloaded file, and I want to truncate this to, let's say, um, just five rows in my data set because I want to sample it, for example. Um, now that I'm done here, I can add uh, additional comments, right, that helps other users to um, determine what it is that needs to be done or, or what this uh, component is actually doing for me. So I'm just going to say, uh, truncate the data file. Okay, and then I can just run this pipeline by entering a pipeline name. So I'm just going to name a demo here. I choose my environment where I want to run this pipeline. Just picking the same development environment I chose earlier. 
and then the run is submitted. And then once everything has been prepared for the execution, uh, we can look at the results in the Kubeflow central dashboard. Let's just wait until this opens up. It just takes a second here. And now we can see that things are processing. So that's in a nutshell what the Lyra does, how the pipeline editor works. Um, there's of course a lot more to this, right? And um, I would like to invite you to actually uh, take a look at uh, one of the articles that we have published uh, in preparation for the conference, or take a look at some of the documentation or tutorials that we have created. This has been uh, a fun experience for me. Um, unfortunately, I need to get back to the conference. There are a lot more exciting talks um, to listen to and customers to talk to. Take a look at uh, the article that we have published. Take a look at some of the tutorials uh, that we are going to link out of this video here uh, and, and other information that we have provided that should hopefully make it easy for you to get started. Thank you.